you see it. Okay, so today we're gonna to do the power series approximation to solving the Bessel function. So here we have our Bessel function. First, what we wanna do is we wanna set up an ensemble. The ensemble is gonna let us convert this into a power series form. So before we can actually go plug it in, we need to find y double prime and y prime so that you can plug it in for that. Doing simple derivation of that, or derivatives of that, we find that y prime equals n times a n times x to the n minus one. For y double prime, we find that it's the sum of n times n minus one, a n times x to the n minus two. Having these n minus ones and n minus twos is gonna be very important for putting it into a constant x value term later. So now we plug it in to the Bessel function. And this is where you can see how this n minus two and n minus one has a good effect on it. When we multiply x squared by x to the n minus two, we actually turn that into x squared plus n minus two. So the twos cancel out and it leaves us with that in the form of ax to the n. So now you can see that we have all of these as just x to the n, except for this one. This one's in x to the n minus two. But you can solve this by just changing the basis of the index for it. So now what we do is we set it up where m equals n plus two. Now when we put this into our form, it becomes a to the m minus two here because n equals two, or m minus two. So since m and n are just independent of each other, and it's just something arbitrary that we've assigned to it, we can actually just say m is n, and then we can add this to our other forms. So now we have this, which is the basis of our summation for the power series approximation. So we could have two solutions to this, where you either have x to the n equals zero, which is trivial because x is just zero, or the coefficient, all of this is zero. So what we want to do is we want to solve for the coefficient to be zero, but we want to solve specifically for a to the n. The reason why we want to solve for a to the n is so that when we later go back and solve our equation, we have all of the ans for our power series approximation. So doing some basic algebra, we can take this and turn it into the form of this. So basically doing this, it lets you find a general a sub n as a basis, or not as a basis, but found from other values of a sub n minus one, a sub n minus two, and so forth. So to be able to solve for this, you need to have the initial conditions, a zero and a sub one. Because as you can see from these first three terms worked out, a sub two relies on a sub zero, and a sub three relies on a sub one. So when you go forth and you're able to just continue working, you would be able to start after you've given these. Now, in this actual function, the initial conditions would have it so that it's always zero and the whole function just disappears. So we're just gonna leave it in terms of a's.